Yo, an amazing game last night. They're trailing. The Knicks are trailing 25 points to the Celtics in the Garden. You got Evan Forty Nia out there. They climb all the way back after a terrible first half, and the game is capped by a buzzer beater three-pointer for the win by none other than the kid R.J. Barrett. The stadium goes nuts, and people want to say all that was overshadowed because Julius Randle gave the fans a thumbs down. Give me a break. I'm about to tell you why Julius Randle's thumbs down, which pretty much was a middle finger to the entire fan base, is actually a good thing. Coming up next, right here on Riding with the Knicks. Welcome back to Riding with the Knicks. This is the channel where we talk about the team that we love, the New York Knicks, the season as it unfolds, and the deeper themes that we can pull out of the game, apply to our lives, and become the best versions of ourselves. And man, do we have a deeper theme to pull out of the game, to apply to our lives, to be the best versions of ourselves today. Woo! So let's just recap this. Crazy game, amazing comeback, we're 19 and 20. After 14 ga after 40 games last year, we were 20 and 20. So, you know, it's a it's a big moment for the Knicks right now. And people are complaining. The prevailing headline, the reason I'm even making this video, is because people are upset that Julius Randle gave the fans a thumbs down and that he pretty much afterwards said, F you. Uh, he clarified it. Yep, that was to everybody who's a hater. Even if they are wearing Knicks jerseys in the in the stands, F you. And we want to be upset about it. We want to complain and whine about it. Let's talk about three major things right now. Three reasons why uh, the fans, me included, have acted like we've acted uh, regarding Julius Randle. Um, I did not call for this man. I was not excited about this guy getting um, COVID. I think that that is horrifying. And I think that uh, most people did not wish that upon him. And so that's a subset of grimy people who um, are happy that Julius Randle was in health and safety protocols. So let's leave them out of it for this. And we'll just talk about fans who were booing, um, who were upset. Three reasons why fans would boo, at least from what I've heard. The boo because we're upset. We're emotional. We don't, we want Julius Randle to be playing better. We want the team to be playing better. And so you boo, you're upset, you're emotional, you respond out of that, boo. And I'm talking, when I say boo, in the stadium, but also like just on social media, on Twitter, in, in life, you know, we're upset, we're complaining because we're emotional and we want to see better. Um, and we don't really have another way to impact it, so, or we feel like we'd have no way to impact it, so you respond. That's one group. The other group is people who are saying, no, my boo and my criticism is to motivate Julius Randle to be what he was last year, to do the things he needs to do to be what he was last year. And so it's almost like, no, this is a tool I have, not just to respond because I'm emotional, I'm upset, but I think that my actions are gonna motivate them to be the best versions of themselves. I don't buy that, um, but I, I do buy that people think that. I don't think that um, the fans' criticism uh, is actually motivating to someone like Julius Randle, uh, but I could be wrong, and we'll get there in a minute. And the last group, I said there was three, uh, the last group is uh, people who are just booing either in the stadium or online, on Twitter or whatever, uh, because everybody else is. That group think, pack mentality, primal like instinct to join the herd. Um, and so those are the three. And so let's, let's break those down real quick. The first one, we're emotional. Okay, whatever, that makes sense to me. But then how are you gonna then, let me keep my hands on the wheel, how are you then gonna then uh, get upset with Julius Randle for being emotional, right? He hits the bucket, pulls it, pulls it next between two, gives everybody a thumbs down, clarifies later, no, no, that was an F you. Um, if we're booing because we're emotional, this dude can respond because he's emotional for sure. So, a um, little bit of us, a little bit of him, whatever. The next group, people who are saying, I actually want this to motivate him. Um, and so now you're gonna be upset when you got the desired result? That don't make any sense. You or we, the people in that group who criticized Julius Randle or, or booed him, 
for uh, because they wanted to, to motivate him to be a better version of of a basketball player that we uh, you know the one we saw last year. Uh, then that happens. He turns the game, turns his, his game around mid game, and, and hits that bucket to pull people within two. Gives everybody a thumbs down, really the middle finger, and uh, then we're upset. He did exactly. The, you had a desired outcome. How could you be upset? You should be like, great. Um, and then there's a third group of people who are acting in that primal, like join the herd pack mentality. Um, and this is important thing for us to see. Julius Randle is a leader. People want to question his leadership. People want to question like his his determination, his grit, his New York identity. Like, no, he just showed you his New York identity by doing that and then backing it up to the podium. Like, is it easier or harder? Like, is it easier to be in a group yelling at one person? Or is it easier to be one person being yelled at by a group and give them the middle finger? and say, nah, I'm going to do me anyway. Uh, it's clearly easier to be in a group and yell at the one. That's why we do it. We want to be part of the group. We don't want to be outside of the group. And so you got one man in an arena filled with people booing him and in a, not an entire, a, f- a faction of the fan base booing and criticizing him. Um, and he stands up, one guy, and says, F everybody. I'm out here doing my thing. I know what I need to do to be the best basketball player I can be. And I'm doing those things. And so if y'all don't like it, shut up. I love that. I love that. I love that about somebody who's like, that's that's a leader. And I'm not saying you should go out there now and, and go to your job or go to your school or go to your family and be like, F you, F you, F you, F you. Everybody shut up because I'm doing me. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, if you have that determination to stand up against an entire crowd who is angry and upset and voicing that anger and that, that, um, that hostility towards you, and you can say, forget you, I'm doing me, that is leadership. That's saying, I'm going to be me regardless of the scenarios, the storms going around me. Uh, and that is something that we want to, I would want to at least aspire to be. And so... Those are the three areas that, that uh, of, of what's going on and how Julius Randle responded. And so, what is the thing that we, the thing that we pull out for ourselves? Like, how do we take this 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 example and be the best versions of ourselves? I'm not telling you don't criticize a dude. I'm not telling you any of that. I don't think anybody should be wishing um, COVID on anybody. And so, if you're doing that, look at yourself in the mirror. But you can criticize and boo and do it all you want. But don't be offended when he says back to you how he feels. Um, and so. Also, what else do you want in New York? Yeah, I live in Ohio now, but from zero to 20 years old, I live in Staten Island, New York. New Yorkers tell each other F you all the time. It's like a, it's like endearing. It's like how you, you talk to family members. If you ask someone on the streets in New York City, like, if you say, hey, how you doing? Or good morning. People are going to look at you like, I don't know you. Not everybody, but like, that's, that's part of who New York is. And so for Julius Randle to, to do that is like almost the most New York thing he's done. And we got a guy out here who gave us, who led the team to the most relevant season that we've had in uh, in a decade. And now he's not playing up to the, the same standard he was last year. And the fans are upset about it. But for him to turn around and say, shut up, uh, that's pretty New York. And uh, it, sh- it should endear him more to the New York Knicks fans. And if I was on his team and I saw the guy who was taking the brunt of the heat, the guy who was called the best team guy on the team, the guy who was ta- called the leader, he's taking the, the brunt of it and he's, he's working through it. Uh, as a teammate, I would say, I'm with you. I feel like it was a galvanizing thing for the team last night. And so for me and for you, there's one word that comes to mind that I want to take from this, uh, watching this thing unfold and really apply it to my life today and this week and hopefully for a long time. That one word is resolve. Now resolve is a verb to resolve an issue, to find the solution to a problem. But I'm actually talking about resolve as if it's a noun, because it's also a noun. Resolve, the thing that we have when we have resolve. The synonym is like determination. And so resolve is I am determined in the in the path and the course that I'm on. And nothing is going to deter me from that. This man wants to win. 
This man wants the Knicks to be great. This man doesn't just want to get paid, he wants to be seen as a great player in the league. He wants to lead this franchise, even when the when the Knicks fans, me included, want him traded some days and are pissed about how he's playing some days. But he is demonstrating resolve. Like nothing is gonna deter me from my path. And if, you, if you're aspiring to be a leader in your job, in your community, in your church, in your work, in your work, in, like in your school, um, you gotta have resolve. We have to have a level of resolve. And so I'm looking at this man, I'm saying, that's some serious resolve. And I think it's showing a, a great thing for our team because like I said, we were 20 and 20 after 40 games last year. We're 19 and 20 now. And we had an amazing second half of our season last year. It was a shorter season. But I think we've got amazing things in our future as Knicks fans. And so um, I just want to say thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, if you like content like this, let me know by liking the video, by um, shouting it out in the comments below. And of course, if you're still watching right now, you've got to hit that subscribe button. It's a small commitment for you. It means a huge deal to me as a creator. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for, um, for subscribing. And I really hope that you um, demonstrate a level of resolve today that you haven't yet known. Until next video, let's go Knicks.